At night, drones attack the Kremny EL plant in the Russian city of Bryansk, one of the largest manufacturers of microelectronics in Russia, which, in particular, makes parts for the Iskander missile systems, local residents and telegram channels reported. As a result of the detonation of an explosive device from a downed drone, a fire broke out in the attic of a non-residential building. Firefighters from the Russian Emergencies Ministry in the Bryansk region quickly extinguished the fire. There were no casualties, the governor of the Russian region wrote on social media at night. According to the Russian Defense Ministry, their air defense destroyed and intercepted 16 unmanned aerial vehicles overnight, 13 UAVs over the territory of the Bryansk region, two over the territory of the Rostov region, and one over the Belgorod region. The local authorities have not confirmed the attack on the plant, but local residents have reported it, the ASTRA Telegram channel notes. According to reports, Kremny EL is one of the largest microelectronics manufacturers in Russia. 94% of the enterprise's output in 2017 was manufactured for the needs of the Russian Defense Ministry. The plant services the Almazanti, Aerospace Equipment, Sazvezdi, and Vega concerns. It makes parts for the Panzer Air Defense Systems and Iskander Missile Systems. The city of Chasivya in the Donetsk region has become one of the centers of destruction of the Russian occupiers. This was reported today, October the 16th, on the air of the Freedom TV channel by General, former head of the Foreign Intelligence Service of Ukraine, Mikhailo Malamuz. He noted that he maintains contact with the leaders of the 24th separate mechanized brigade named after King Daniel. They are very strong there. This is a strong brigade, well prepared. A lot of preparation has been carried out in terms of strengthening capabilities, not only in terms of personnel, equipment, weapons, ammunition, especially drones. They were moved from New York when they held a position there. No one could advance, the general said. Malamuz noted that now the enemy is trying to bypass Chasivya from the flanks because they cannot take the city head on. The Russians were moving along the canals, entering there. But the guys zeroed in on all these points, and as soon as they enter, they unleash a barrage of fire there. And therefore, the destruction of a large number of manpower and equipment every day is very effective. Our drones are actively working, so they strike at the middle and immediate rear. This neutralizes new offensive operations, he said. According to Malamuz, there are fortifications in the city which enable the Ukrainian defense forces to defend themselves and deliver counter-attacks. I think that this is one of the centers for the destruction of a large number of enemy servicemen and equipment, the general said. The frontline area around Chasivya is no less difficult than the others. Chasivya has been out of the media spotlight for a long time. Currently, the Russians are trying to put pressure on Chasivya from at least four directions. These are frontal attacks on the town itself, noted Sahi Zaguretz, a Ukrainian military expert. According to the military expert in some areas, the Russian forces have crossed the Siversky Donetsk Canal, trying to amass forces beyond the canal, which is an obstacle to the Russian actions. But the Ukrainian military say they have enough ammunition for large caliber artillery. Sometimes the weather affects the use of FPV drones, emphasized Zuguretz. The military expert added that the occupying Russian army plans to advance into one of the western neighborhoods of Chasivya to establish a northern insertion into the city, but these movements are still being assessed. Systematic combat actions are currently underway to prevent the Russians from advancing to these areas, specifically to the town from the Siversky Donetsk Donbass Canal area to the northern outskirts of Chasivya, explained. Zuguretz. Despite the Russians' attempts to dislodge the Ukrainian armed forces, the Ukrainian foothold in the Kursk region has existed for two months and is attracting significant forces of the aggressor. This means that the operation has justified itself, believes Israeli military observer Yigal Levin. He noted that with the onset of the autumn rains, the likelihood of the Ukrainian armed forces being completely expelled from the Kursk region is decreasing. At the same time, a small Ukrainian group, estimated to number around 10,000 fighters, is holding down Russian forces numbering around 30,000 to 50,000 people here. 
If these estimates are correct, then the Ukrainian general staff's plan to diversify resources has succeeded. I suspect that if Sudza is not recaptured before the full winter and cold weather, then the Ukrainians will turn it into a full-fledged defense hub just in time for spring. Levin believes. He also drew attention to the fact that Russian aviation and artillery are currently raising villages in the Kursk region to dust. Although this in itself is not great, otherwise these bombs and shells would be flying towards Ukrainian villages and cities, the analyst notes. As reported, Russia has made several attempts to dislodge the Ukrainian armed forces from the Kursk region. Although the Russians have managed to achieve certain tactical successes, President Zelensky assures that the Ukrainian armed forces are holding their designated lines. The chairman of the Council of Reserves of the Ground Forces of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Ivan Timochko, stated that Russian troops are building up their forces in the Kursk region and apparently Putin has decided to carpet bomb his own territory. I heard information that they try to carry out massive strikes. There is no official result from us yet. What appeared on the maps is so contradictory that it is difficult for me to assess the reality in this direction. I think that today or tomorrow we will have more detailed information. The fact itself is a test of strength. What our brothers in arms from this direction say is that Putin decided on something that most of us understood but considered absolutely illogical. Carpet bombing of the cursed region, the speaker said. According to him, the enemy is building up and will try to build up its forces in the Kursk region in order to carry out a large-scale operation with the aim of displacing Ukrainian forces.